Pat O'Rourke, the sports editor of the BU News Service. This is Pouring Out. Alongside me is Alex Hirsch, who's a BU News Service contributor. We're going to talk about a few points over the next few minutes. And uh, the, I guess the first thing we'll get to, Alex, is uh, Dave Dombrowski, the Red Sox president, saying that there's going to be a big shakeup in the offseason. There might be a couple players going. Who do you think might go? Well, um, I think for certain we're... One of, the, one of the names we're going to be hearing a lot of is Hanley Ramirez or Pablo Sandoval. Uh, one of those two mm -hmm. most likely will be gone. I'm hoping both of them gone, but that, that might be wishful thinking. Uh, but I think what he said was that it's going to be a hard trade, someone that we're not going to want to see go, which I still think Xander Bogarts is untouchable, but I think that might mean Mookie, Met, Mookie Betts or Eddie Rodriguez, they might be headed out the door. Uh, possibly Blake Swihart as well. I don't know. Who are you thinking? Yeah, I think Swihart's number one on the list in terms of uh, people that might go. I don't see Ramirez or Sandoval going. I think he understands that their value is very low. They're not going to get very much for him. And I think what they're looking for is they want an ace. They want a big impact player. You're not going to get that for Hanley Ramirez. You're not going to get that for Pablo Sandoval. You've got to trade one of, these, one of these stud prospects, whether it's Betts, whether it's Swihart, whether it's Rodriguez, whether it's maybe a couple kids in the system like a... Um, like a Rafael Devers or Andrew Benintendi or um, Manuel Marco, even though they may they may not have that value attached to them just yet. But uh, yeah, I think I think it's going to be one of their big, big, big time prospects. I think Mookie Betts and Xander Bogarts are the two untouchables. Well, that's what, the that's guys, what I'm hoping for. Yeah, I, they're going to keep them at any, any chance possible. I, I, I don't Mike want go. Mookie. I don't want Mookie Betts gone. Yeah. I, I want Mookie Betts and Xander here. But one of the names that has been linked to us right now, um, a lot of reports are saying, mm -hmm. Roldis Chapman from the Cincinnati Reds, the closer there, the big flamethrower. Uh, what do you think about him? I'd love to see him in the Red Sox uniform. Yeah, I'm not crazy about it just because it's it would be a one year rental. I don't think he's gonna he's gonna be a free agent after 2016. It's gonna take a lot of money to bring him back. And I'm someone who's my me personally. I don't feel um, the the solution to a bullpen is throwing money at it. And this would this would be essentially what it'd be. It'd be throwing, either throwing money at it and or you know basically a one year rental for Raldis Chapman. And here's the thing with Raldis Chapman. He's 28 years old. He might be. Um, maybe declining a little bit. I think his, his walks per nine innings went up last year. His strikeouts per nine innings went down. Uh, his whip was as high as it's ever been in his, in his career. So you're seeing signs of him kind of falling down a bit. I know he has that, he has that heater. He th you know, throws 100 miles an hour. I think he had the 18, this is the 18 fastest pitches in the, in the major leagues in 2015 where, where, where all this Chapman pitches. But uh, I, I wouldn't I would, it's not something I would do. I'd love to see him in a Sox uniform. I don't care that he's gone after this year. It's just money. I, you, I don't think you have to give up the farm as well for him. I don't think you're, you're not going to – I don't think you have to give up Swihart or Eddie Rodriguez or Xander or well, Mookie if Betts. If it's free for, to any of those guys, for, forget about I, it. I don't think you have to give up any of those guys. So I'm willing to give up someone for just a one-year rental for a Rodas Chapman because he's better than any other closer that I think that we could get at this point. And I'm all in for 2016. I, I'm all in. I, you, this is probably David Ortiz – most likely his last productive year. I'm all in. Bring a roll to Chapman that for a few in. Years now. Yeah, we've been saying that for a few years, but I'm all I'm all in on that. Yeah. He's not the only name in the trade market though in Boston right now. Uh, Demarcus Cousins for the Sacramento Kings. Right now he is having a tough time with George Carl, their head coach, blowing up right now in their faces. A lot of people want Demarcus Cousins on on the Celtics. Should they should they pull the trigger? Yeah, it's not something I do. It, it, what, what would you have to give up? Give up for him? I think that you know, that's probably the biggest well, what question do you got? in any trade. Well, yeah, that, that's another question. What do you have? You know, are, are you going to be able to put together a package for Demarcus Cousins? If if you were to put together a package from for Demarcus Cousins, uh, Marcus Smart would I think would almost certainly be in it. Sure, why not? Um, what you would you would want to trade Demarcus Smart? Uh, not Marcus Smart in a trade for Demarcus Cousins. Absolutely, I would trade Marcus Smart for Demarcus Cousins. Demarcus yeah, Cousins is about 24 years old, I believe. He is the he is one of the best centers in the league in a league that is strapped for young centers. So you, you trade Marcus Smart. That's fine. Marcus Smart has yet to prove to me as much as I. Love the kid. He's yet to prove to me that he is a starting caliber point guard or even shooting guard. He's just got starting caliber point guard defense and shooting guard defense. So yeah, bring on Mar bring on Demarcus Cousins. If anyone can tame him, I'm pretty confident in Brad Stevens. So yeah, I'll take him any day of the week. Well, that's the thing is, you know, can you tame him? Uh, it's a big big uncertainty. I don't yeah. know if I'd give up. I certainly wouldn't give up Smart for him. I don't know if I'd give any of the other big pieces. I certainly. Uh, would be hesitant to give up for DeMarcus Cousins for someone who, yes, he's put up big numbers. Yes, he's been very good, but he hasn't been consistent. He's been hurt quite a bit. And 
and, and he's never he's never really won anything. I think it, it's kind of a direct result of, uh, well, not of him. And, not that these Celtics, they haven't won anything either. So, you know, that is true. That, that's another very but good point. From the parquet floor to the football field, Patriots, Giants this week. Big, big matchup because the last three times the Patriots have played the Giants, They've lost, including two Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. Tom Coughlin might have Bill Belichick's number. What do you think about that? Yeah, and you mentioned the last three losses, and, and Coughlin's 5-1 and one against Belichick. Yeah. He, might, he could be and the, the only one that Belichick's ever won. <laughs> I think they were down, what, 10 or 13 points? Oh, it was week, seven, week, was 17 week 17 of the game. undefeated yeah, won, season. Yeah. It was it 38-35? And oh, they, were, no. they were down 10 or 13 points. And yeah, but, but anyway, yeah, look, here, here's the thing with Tom Coughlin. I think... People underrate Tom Coughlin, what he is as a coach. I think he's a very good coach. I don't know if he's a Hall of Fame coach, but he's definitely in the Hall of Very Good. And Hall of Very Good. Yeah. But, <laughs> okay. um, you know, I, I think him and, him and Belichick are very similar guys. They're, they're no-nonsense no guys. They're, they're Bill Parcells' disciples. So, yeah, maybe he does have his number a little bit. But in, in the three wins that he won, the two Super Bowl games and the one, the one win in 2011, they were, they were last possession Last possession win. So the Patriots were leading, you know, late in the fourth quarter. So well, it's not like he's steamrolled him in every well, game, but um, he's got his number. I think that's for sure. He's got his number. He's he's five and one against him. No one else has got that type of winning record against Belichick. So yeah, he's got his number. Uh, Tom Coughlin knows how to play the Patriots. The one thing that he has had though on these last three uh, in the last three wins is a pass rush, and that's been the big thing that mm-hmm. has been able – they've been able to get Tom Brady off his game, moving around in the pocket where he wasn't as mobile at times. Tom Brady's a little bit way more elusive now than he was before. So we'll see what happens on Sunday, which, you know, leads us to our – the end of the segment. And here's, let's, here's the other thing. leads with, us to our prediction. The, but one, one last point. That team in 2011, he won – you know, winning two games against that team in 2011, I don't think that was a particularly great team. And I think the key to beating that team was getting Brady off guard. He got, and, and to his credit, he got Brady off guard in both those wins. But anyway. Uh, uh, anyways, yep. Leads us to our prediction. Patriots, Giants, Sunday, 425, I believe, is the kickoff. What's happening? Well, it's looking like another, another historic season. It seems like any historic season the Patriots put together, the Giants always get in the way. <laughs> the Giants are in the way. So I'm going to say uh, <laughs> the Patriots will, will it'll be a Julian, touch, Julian Edelman touchdown at the end of regulation. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll be down 34-33, and uh, Steven Gostelski will miss the, the extra point attempt. And uh, 34-33 Giants. Okay, Steven, so you, you think Gostowski, but that's but a then bold they'll, prediction. But then Gostowski they'll go, hasn't missed an yeah. extra point all year. It, it's, hasn't it's against, one in, like, years, it's, I don't it's, believe. It's, against, it's always against. They hadn't, lost, <laughs> they hadn't lost in 2007 when they faced the Giants in the Super Bowl. Right, that's so. true. All right, my bold prediction. Patriots are going to win this one. Tom Coughlin might have uh, Belichick's number, but he doesn't have it this week. He, they've got four. Their, de- their pass rush is terrible, and they're missing two fingers on that pass rush with JPP. So Patriots win this one handedly, too. I'm going to go 30-13. to 13. Okay. Eli Manning's not going to do anything against this team this week. That about wraps up for and out this week. I'm Alex Harris alongside Pat O'Rourke, the sports editor for the BU News Service. Make sure you tune in next week for um, the third episode of 4 and Out, as well as check out our podcast on Tuesdays. Um, we'll be putting that, airing that out on BUNewsService.com. Thanks for joining us.